Hey there, uh, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss the hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle. I have already made a video on the menstrual cycle. Please have a look at it first and then come and have a look at this video. So in this video, I am going to make you understand as to what is it that you are going to write if they ask hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle. Maybe it will be asked as a short note or it can be also asked as a part of the long essay where in the long essay is to explain the menstrual cycle, both the ovarian as well as the endometrial. So the first and foremost thing that we should write when we are asked regarding the hormonal uh, regulation of the menstrual cycle is what is called as the HPO axis, which is nothing but hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis. And the second thing is we should be able to explain the interplay between four important hormones which are contributing in the regulation of the menstrual cycle via a graphical representation and these four hormones are the estrogen, the progesterone, the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. So first let's begin with the HPO axis. So the hypothalamus is going to secrete a hormone and this hormone is called as gonadotropin releasing hormone and the gonadotropin releasing hormone is always secreted in a pulsatile manner never in a continuous way. So the hypothalamus is going to secrete this GnRH in pulses and these pulses are going to last for about 5 to 20 or 25 minutes and these pulses are going to occur in every 1 to 2 hours and the gonadotropin releasing hormone via the portal blood vessels it's going to enter into the anterior pituitary and the anterior pituitary gland under the influence of the GnRH is going to secrete two hormones which are collectively called as gonadotropins. The first one is the follicle stimulating hormone and the second one is the luteinizing hormone. Now this follicle stimulating hormone is going to act on granulosa cells which are present in the ovary and under the influence of the follicle stimulating hormone the granulosa cells are going to secrete two hormones one is the estrogen and second one is the inhibin fine now the luteinizing hormone is also going to act on the granulosa cells and under the influence of the luteinizing hormone the granulosa cells are going to produce progesterone or these are also called as progestins fine now the luteinizing hormone acts on one more cell which is present in the ovary and these are called as the theca cells and these theca cells are going to produce progesterones or progestins. Now theca cells they also produce androgens okay they are also going to produce the androgens and these androgens they are going to enter into the granulosa cells and under the influence of the follicle stimulating hormone and under the influence of one enzyme which is called as aromatase, these androgens are again converted back to estrogen. Okay. So now at last we are having three important hormones. The first one is the estrogen, the second one is the progesterone and the third one is the inhibin. Now the hormone inhibin is going to have a negative feedback inhibition on the anterior pituitary and it is going to cause a reduction in the secretion of the follicle stimulating hormone. Similarly, both the estrogen as well as progesterone or progestins, they are also going to have a negative feedback inhibition. So estrogen is going to cause the negative feedback inhibition both at the level of the anterior pituitary as well as at the level of the hypothalamus. Similarly, the progestins are also going to cause a negative feedback inhibition both at the level of the anterior pituitary as well as at the level of the hypothalamus so as to decrease the secretion of estrogen and progesterone. So this is going to occur when the level of estrogen 
in the periphery is going to increase both the level of estrogen as well as the progestins in the periphery is going to increase so this axis is what is called as hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis now after this we have to describe this important interplay between the four hormones that is the estrogen the progesterone the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone now this is a beautiful graphical representation of the entire menstrual cycle which is plotted from day 0 to day 28 and this dotted line what you are going to see this dotted line is the 14th day of the cycle wherein the ovulation has occurred so that means the entire cycle now is divided into the pre ovulatory phase this is the pre ovulatory phase or this phase is also called as the follicular phase and the post ovulatory phase that is after the ovulation now this is what is called as the luteal phase so we are having the two phases so now let's see what changes occur in the level of the hormones during the follicular phase so as we know that the follicular phase is nothing but the phase wherein there is uh, development of the follicles and there is also proliferation of the granulosa cells and these granulosa cells they begin to produce estradiol or the estrogen so what is going to happen is slowly and steadily the level of estrogen during the follicular phase it goes on increasing and then it is going to reach a peak a few days prior to the ovulation but as such here you are seeing this blue line there is no much change in the levels of the progesterone now whenever the level of estradiol is going to increase okay what it has to cause it has to cause a negative feedback inhibition both at the level of anterior pituitary as well as hypothalamus and it has to reduce the levels of both fsh as well as lh on the contrary what is going to happen is when the levels of estradiol are peaking that is they are at their maximum level at that point of time estradiol instead of exerting a negative feedback inhibition changes this negative feedback into a positive feedback it, it's going to change it into a positive feedback that means an increase in the level of estrogen is going to cause an increase in the level of both the luteinizing hormone as well as follicle stimulating hormone see that is what we are seeing in the graph here here we can see there is an increase in the LH as well as there is an increase in the FSH concentration and this is going to occur particularly few hours prior to the ovulation so this increase in the LH is more than the increase in the FSH and this increase in the LH is what is called as LH surge and this LH surge is extremely important for the ovulation to occur so the LH surge is the one which is also causing a slight increase here we can see of the progesterone level prior to the ovulation so LH surge along with increase in the concentration of progesterone as well as FSH is what causes ovulation on the 14th day of the cycle now what is ovulation ovulation is the rupture of the graafian follicle and the graafian follicle is going to release the secondary oocyte so now the graafian follicle once it is ruptured it is going to get converted into one more structure which is called as the corpus luteum now this corpus luteum is going to produce both progesterone as well as estrogen in the second phase of the cycle that is the luteal phase of the cycle see here we can see that again the levels estradiol levels had increased and it falls and again it begins to increase so this is the second peak of the estrogen more importantly is a rise in the value of the progesterone because the produ production of progesterone is more compared to the production of the estrogen by the corpus luteum so here we can see there is a increase in the level of the progesterone so whenever now there is an increase in the level of the progesterone and the estrogen the cycle goes back to its negative feedback inhibition mode wherein increase in level of estrogen as well as progesterone is going to cause a fall in the level of follicle stimulating hormone 
as well as the luteinizing hormone here we can see both of them have come back to the basal level so the corpus luteum keeps on secreting progesterone and estrogen roughly till 22nd or 23rd day of the cycle so if 22nd and 23rd day of the cycle there is no pregnancy there is no fertilization then the corpus luteum begins to involute and the corpus luteum gets converted into corpus albicans so now what is going to happen is because of this involution and degeneration of the corpus luteum the level of progesterone and the level of estrogen they begin to fall in the later part of the cycle and ultimately they come back to the basal level which initiates again the menstruation and again the cycle is going to repeat so this is what we are going to write and explain if they ask us regarding the hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle if this video is you have understood the concept behind the hormonal regulation then kindly hit the like button share this video among your friend and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you